The Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce in Industry, FIKI, recently had its annual convention and annual general meeting. An eagerly awaited flagship event which over the years has seen participation from the government, industry, academia, civil servants and other leading luminaries. This year, the convention focused on inherent strengths of the country encompassing industries, its hard-working middle class and its youth, ensuring that India emerges as a strong economy and inspired India. Bharat ke paas market bhi hai, main power bhi hai, aur mission mode par kaam karne ki capability bhi. The convention saw Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurating the expo virtually and formally opening the convention followed by the inaugural address. In the past six years, the trust of the world was made in India. In the past six months, it has become more important. FDI or FPI, विदेशी निवेशकों ने रिकॉर्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट भारत में किया है और निरंतर कर रहे हैं साथियों आज देश का प्रत्येक नागरिक आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान को सफल बनाने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है लोकल के लिए वोकल होकर काम कर रहा है ये एक जीवन उदाहरण है कि देश को अपने प्राइवेट सेक्टर के सामर्थ्य पर कितना विश्वास है भारत का प्राइवेट सेक्टर न सिर्फ हमारी डोमेस्टिक नीड्स को पूरा कर सकता है लेकिन ग्लोबली भी अपनी पहचान उसको और मजबूती से स्थापित कर सकता है साथियों आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान भारत में क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट्स बनाने और भारतीय इंडस्ट्री को और ज्यादा कॉम्पिटिटिव बनाने का भी माध्यम है और 2014 में पहली बार जब लाल किले से मुझे बोलने का मौका मिला तब मैंने एक बात कही थी कि हमारा लक्ष्य रहना चाहिए जीरो डिफेक्ट जीरो इफेक्ट साथियों अनुभव रहा है कि पहले के समय की नीतियों ने कई क्षेत्रों में इन एफिशिएंसी को संरक्षण दिया नए प्रयोग करने से रोका है जबकि आत्मनिर्भर भारत अभियान हर क्षेत्र में एफिशिएंसी को बढ़ावा देता है ऐसे सेक्टर्स जिसमें भारत के पास लॉन्ग टर्म कॉम्पिटिटिव एडवांटेज है उनमें सनराइज और टेक्नोलॉजी ब्रेज इंडस्ट्रीज को नई ऊर्जा देने पर ज्यादा बल दिया जा रहा है हम चाहते हैं कि हमारी ये इन्फंट इंडस्ट्रीज भी भविष्य में और अधिक स्ट्रांग और इंडिपेंडेंट बने इसलिए आपने देखा होगा एक और अहम कदम उठाया गया है देश में प्रोडक्शन लिंक इंसेंटिव स्कीम शुरू की गई है ये स्कीम उन उद्योगों के लिए है जिनमें भारत ग्लोबल चैंपियन बनने की क्षमता रख in line with your powerful initiatives an initiative of invested in india is launched to accelerate and support existing businesses and enable them to scale and benchmark with the world indian business has an equal role in nation building and so at that at this time in your presence we all collectively take a pledge for an inspired india hum sab sankalp lete hain desh ki bhalai ke liye hum sab aapke sath hain Namaste and The convention also saw addresses by key cabinet ministers who emphasized on the roadmap ahead for the growth of the country. By inspired India, the constituent of our medical fraternity, 
who made every possible effort to minimize loss of lives. The inspired, the inspired India that constitute a few, the esteemed members of business and industry who made every possible effort to minimize loss of livelihoods. My friends, the inspired India that constitute of innovators and enterprising youth who work tirelessly to minimize loss of opportunities. The inspired India constitutes of institutions like election commission that managed to conduct a free, fair and peaceful election with 7.79 crore voters in such a challenging time. The inspired India that constitute of our armed forces whom no virus could deter from their duty while the world was fighting the deadly virus they were valiantly defending our borders and above all the inspired india that constitute millions of common men and women who showed great patience and resilience in this fight against corona virus today india is back on track with a new vigor in our fight against COVID-19 and inspired India with all Indians participated together as a nation. The role of citizens in successful implementation of the lockdown in order to contain the initial spread of the virus was no mean achievement. Our GDP is 14 to 16 percent from the agriculture sector. Our manufacturing sector is 22 to 24, 26 percent and service sector from 52 to 56 percent. Now for development of our country to make India Atma Nirbhar Bharat, we need to increase manufacturing sector up to 30 percent. And agriculture, at least we need to make it more than 25 percent. Agriculture and allied activities are very important. Now presently in our economy, our big problem is the contribution in GDP from agriculture, rural and tribal, particularly 115 aspirant district is very negligible. And that is one of the reason is our GDP is not exactly what we are expecting. So this is the time that we should have more concentration on agriculture, rural and tribal sector and 115 aspirant district. Without developing rural India, we cannot get good record for which we are expecting for Atmanirbhar Bharat target. So my first request to all of you to make Atmanirbhar India, the first important thing is the people, those who are socially, economically, educationally backward, where they are facing crucial economic problem, when there is a crisis for economic situation, also the crisis for actually they are facing poverty and where we need to concentrate on Gao, Garib, Majdur and Kisan. That is the highest priority for the government. Digital India simply put it designed to empower ordinary Indians with the power of technology. Most important, bridging the digital divide and bringing in digital inclusion. As we say in Hindi, Samaveshi Digital Bharat Badana. And this must be achieved through technology which is homegrown, developmental and low cost. As Sudhir Babu said, India population of 1.3 billion plus, 1.2 billion mobile phone, 1.26 billion Aadhaar card. By leveraging all this with the Jandhan account, how we created a new ecosystem of delivery of welfare. In 440 government schemes, nearly government of India and states. We have delivered 13 lakh crore in the last five and a half years to the bank account, the poor, Manrega payment, gas connections, subsidy, food subsidy, etc. I think uh, today, uh, as the power of the digital is being increasingly appreciated, uh, uh, it is natural that across the world there will be many more countries and societies and people who would want to have some influence over their own digital future now 
uh, what you know when you use the word techno nationalism and maybe that's not your intention what it does is it somehow implies as though uh, transnational players have some kind of uh, natural legitimacy uh, and you know one should not somewhere uh, sort of uh, we should accept their influence and their dominance in a very uh, unquestioning way now my sense is you are seeing a lot of that today happen in the digital domain just like you saw in the industrial domain which is we are playing digital catch up now if there's one country one society which should be doing it it's us because you know it it should not be our fate that like in the past we ended up as a market for other industrial economies today we end up as the generator of data and the consumer of data with no uh, benefits uh, uh, for our enterprises and our talents we have identified another 24 sectors on which work is going on at different levels the initiative is led by industry you have your people your representative in the scale committee so it's fiki cii ashcham and all other sectoral industry leaders who are working together to come up with an actionable agenda to add nearly 200 lakh crores worth of manufacturing in india in the next 10 years that's an average of about 20 lakh crores of domestic manufacturing being added to india every single year i believe it's an ambitious program 300 billion dollar addition to our manufacturing ecosystem will certainly add millions of jobs and work opportunities directly and indirectly it will create scale and quality in different se sectors and help us to meet the demands of india the growing demands of 1.3 billion people while also helping us to expand our international and export outreach in the past 5 years we have added 142000 circuit kilometers to the grid and that strengthening will continue uh, we uh, created green corridors to handle the injection of renewable energy the large scale injection of renewable energy we have set up renewable energy management centers 15 of them we more important we connected every village and we connected every house in the past Uh, you know, the, we connected in, under Sohagya program. We connected about 28 million households in 18 months. The International Energy Agency called that the fastest expansion of access ever anywhere in the world, and that's true. No, in no other country has this happened such a sort. Uh, so the and not only that, not only generation and distribution, but also. Uh, generation and transmission but also distribution we focused on new areas of growth iot devices computer hardware servers and in the pli for advanced cell chemistry battery manufacturing is actually a massive opportunity uh, for us to look at areas of consumer not merely consumer electronics but also in the faster adoption of electric vehicles and renewable energy solutions because batteries will be required for both mobility as well as for grid solutions and it should bring major domestic and international players to establish competitive and efficient manufacturing landscape in india similarly on uh, as we head towards 5g we should be able to build a secured and advanced telecom infrastructure and we if we need to and we need to become a major original equipment manufacturer of telecom and networking product we can't predict what the next tail event is but whatever that is uh, i think our built in infrastructure and capability around digital tech uh, is going to create resilience and transformation The transformative power of artificial intelligence and digital technology has emerged as an enabler in each sector. Some key players spoke about the digital world ahead.
telemedicine. We've been talking about it for decades. Guess what? Every session now will be, you know, an outpatient visit will start with an AI triage tool. We'll then go to a, a, a sort of a, a video call, and then ultimately you may show up at the hospital. And that is going to be structural change. Same thing is happening in retail. Uh, you know, I was even talking to a small business in the United States that was able to do a quick pivot to curbside pickup. Uh, by just building an app for that. Uh, and so that ability to use digital tools to be able to deal with a tail event, uh, because we can't predict what the next tail event is, but whatever that is, uh, I think our built-in infrastructure and capability around digital tech uh, is going to create resilience and transformation. And that, I think, is the most exciting thing to see. Digital and data, which was already upon us, has been advanced during the pandemic by at least a decade. If you spend a moment to think, none of us could have spent more time on video calls, made more digital payments, done more doctor consultations on video, and more importantly, seen more children on studying online. The impact of COVID on innovation has been all pervasive and models of working from home are still growing. AI is a game changer. It's the most powerful tool in generations for expanding knowledge, increasing prosperity, enriching the human experience and expanding freedom. All science and engineering efforts will leverage AI. It will be the foundation of the innovation economy and a source of enormous power for those who harness it companies, and nations. I feel an urgency to get AI right. I, I must say that my, my sense of urgency is amplified because of broader economic and strategic developments. You cannot ignore these trends in the international landscape. With the COVID-19 pandemic putting a strain on the healthcare system, it has become necessary to work on the vaccination and also build a roadmap for future healthcare. Some key policy makers spoke in this regard. We are very proud that uh, India's uh, science and technology enterprise, as well as the, the industry, vaccine industry in particular, that enterprise rose to the occasion. Biomedical devices industry rose to the occasion. I want to place on record the fact how so quickly almost 100 diagnostic tests in a matter of weeks, indigenous ones, came up on the scene and we overshot our local requirements are in a position to send them abroad and most of them or many of them are are absolutely competitive and some of them are game changers like the feluda uh, crispr te crispr technology based rapid diagnostic test for example is uh, we were producing zero ppe and now we are producing more than half a million per day that's far above what we need we were hardly making any ventilators and today we can make more than 50,000 ventilators a year, and we are looking for the market where to take them. So we changed, we adapted, and our story of COVID-19 pandemic control and response also was a graded, proactive, iterative, science-driven, epidemiology-driven approach. And we think, as a nation, we did well. I think if we're honest, if we're all honest, the healthcare systems around the world, uh, in Western Europe, the US, and, and in the UK in particular, have all been struggling. Uh, I don't think they, in their current form, um, they are going to be manageable for the future. Uh, we've got waiting times are getting longer. The, the burden of unmet disease, particularly in mental health, is, is growing. The demography of our countries, the people are getting older. Um, the the, the tr number of people with chronic long-term conditions, multiple long-term conditions, growing expectations, and the growing costs, you know, where some 20% of GNP of our wealth is now going into healthcare uh, at a time when life expectancy has plateaued and health inequalities are rising. This is not, this is not a recipe for long-term success and it's not sustainable in my view. There has to be a very fundamental change to, as to how we deliver healthcare. And healthcare will become, I think, more predictive, more preventative, more personalized. 
Mark Mission of Canada Pension Plan Investment Board spoke briefly on the road ahead for investments in India. CPP Investments is a global investment management firm that invests the Canada Pension Plan, the largest pension fund in Canada by a significant margin, and is the only Canadian fund that is amongst the top 10 funds in the world. We were created 21 years ago as a dedicated, completely arm's length from politics, professional investment management firm to invest the money that's not immediately needed to pay benefits for the Canada Pension Plan. Over the last 21 years, we've built a global investing organization with over 1,800 professionals in nine offices around the world with over 26 different investing strategies spanning both public and private markets. Today, 85% of our investments are outside of Canada, and almost 30% of the fund is invested in the Asia Pacific. Today, we heard the Honorable Prime Minister and several senior ministers and bureaucrats talk about the reforms that have been done, but more importantly, those that are underway to boost agriculture, manufacturing, MSMEs, and the path-breaking and ambitious production-linked incentives, and many more. The theme of uh, FIKI's annual convention, which has inspired India, is very appropriate in my opinion, because we are looking to, to take the adversity which we saw in perhaps the first half of the year due to the COVID situation and see how we can turn it into, uh, into opportunity. Uh, and uh, you know, no less, uh, no less a person than the Prime Minister. A session on Emerging Odisha saw the state emphasizing on the investment environment of the country. My government's transformational initiatives under the 5T Charter and Mohd Sarkar have played a major role in creating a conducive business environment in the state by inculcating professionalism and behavioral change in the state government agencies. I'm happy to inform all present here today that as a part of my government's initiative to reduce regulatory burden on industries, new end-to-end -end online systems for over 30 government to business services have been developed by various departments of the state. To further ensure that the service delivery is prompt, the timelines for the services have also been induced under the state's right to Public Services Act. A session with the Deputy Leader of the Opposition in Rajya Sabha opened up about the road ahead. I personally feel that people, particularly the poor people, must have some money in their hands as it has been done elsewhere by the governments. Then only the demand and the consumption will go up and the factories will produce and there'll be markets, there'll be consumers. Thank you, Mr. Sharma, for that really, really positive and constructive talk to us. Fiki's 93rd annual convention showed the way ahead for an inspired India.